Okay, we're going to get some chicken ready for smoking tomorrow. Uh, the secret for tender, juicy chicken breasts when you're smoking them is to brine them overnight. So I'm going to do one pack of chicken breast, one pack of chicken thighs, and I'm going to put them in a pot of water with kosher salt. So I'm going to sprinkle as much kosher salt in there as uh, will be absorbed by the water. Probably about a gallon of water, a third of a cup of kosher salt roughly. It's hard to get it wrong, just keep throwing it in there um, until you can't get any more to dissolve. So that's the first step, we we'll brine it overnight and then tomorrow we drain it and smoke it outside. And you'll see overnight the chicken will absorb some of the brine, plump up and we'll have beautiful juicy chicken breasts. All right, our chicken's ready to go. Got it out of the packets and trimmed it up. Quite a variety in thigh sizes in the Costco thigh pack. Anyway, got my salt water going here. Um, threw in about a third of a cup per gallon. Seems to be just about the right kind of mix. It's not quite all dissolved yet, and it may not. You know, you don't have to worry about that. Once you got that mixed up, you just throw your chicken in there. And there it's going to stay overnight. Uh, I've also brined it just for a couple hours, and that certainly makes a difference too. Um, overnight seems to work best. So it's as simple as that. And then tomorrow, this brining will really pay off. And if anyone was in any doubts about cats being carnivores, they love the chicken scraps. Our raw meat. You like the raw meat, mittens, do ya? Okay, here's the equipment we're going to use to smoke our chicken. Uh, I've got a charcoal lighter. I don't like using lighter fluid. Uh, it's just, you know, the style where you put paper underneath. And my coals and my little Joe. What is that for, you might ask? And my old smoker. So I've modified the smoker by putting the legs. I took the legs off and put them on the outside. Now the reason for that is because with the legs on the outside the whole thing fits over this 14 inch Little Joe smoker. So I'm going to have my coals in there and what this allows me to do is to add wood chunks or stir up the coals or whatever I want to do. I can take the entire smoker, lift it up and off without taking the lid off. So I'm maintaining temperature. I don't have to use the little door to add coals. Uh, I can do that independently. These water smokers come with two pans usually, one in the bottom. Um, that one you can see there is going to contain water which will boil and provide steam. And usually there's a second pan just like that, that you put coals into that fits on the bottom, on top of the legs when they're turned in the correct way. But the trouble I found with that is you, it's difficult to maintain temperature it doesn't get very hot and you're opening the door and letting the heat out when you're trying to add coals and it's also difficult to do that with the water pan in place so I found this to be a really nice hack and I'll show you that in operation later and then for my wood smoke I'm going to use some hickory chunks um, I've also got some trimmings from my apple tree so why waste them right I may use those so this is an overview of the gear and then we'll um, get this all in action in a little bit. Okay, we're ready to go. Um, you've got to dry off your chicken. 
otherwise it won't absorb the smoke if it has to dry off first. That takes extra time and it'll be overcooked before it's taking any smoke. Uh, coals are ready, so I'm going to throw my wood chunks on top of the coals and then place the grill over it. Um, I've already put some water in there, some hot water. Again, it's a water smoker, but why use energy from your coals heating cold water? So I just boiled some up first and put it on there. So we're ready to go. So I'm going to get the chicken on there and let's see some smoke. All right, we're in business. I got some apple in there and some of those hickory chunks. And here's actually another hack. A lot of these water smokers come with a very simple uh, thermostat or thermometer. Um, I drilled a hole and purchased a better one that gave you the temperature in degrees. And I put it so that the backside, the sensor, is level with the food. Uh, I've seen a bunch of water smokers with the temperature dial in the lid. And really that's going to be so much hotter than the temperature at food level. So we're going to aim for about 225. And this chicken in my experience takes about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. So it's hard to tell by eye, depending on how it takes the smoke. So I am going to check it in with a meat thermometer and yank it at 145. So there we go. And if I need to, because of my arrangement, I can pick up the smoker and lift it off the grill uh, where the coals are. So I can tend the coals without opening the doors or taking the lid off. And you want, co you want smoke early because this chicken doesn't take that long to cook. So you want to put a bunch of smoke in there for the first 15 minutes especially or so. Uh, otherwise your chicken will be cooked before it looks brown. Alright, our temperature is a little on the high side, so I'm going to take the grill off, or the smoker off the grill, and there's a little vent at the bottom of the little Joe you can adjust for airflow. I'm going to turn that down a little bit so it's a little bit less airflow, a little bit less heat. We don't want to cook it too quickly, we want to see smoked chicken. This is an idea of how much uh, wood I've put on there. Just a couple of chunks of hickory and some of those little apple tree cuttings. Our temperature's lowered a little, so that's a bit better. So it should be fine. So I'm just going to forget about it for about a half an hour and then check uh, with my meat thermometer. And my attempt is to take it off about 145 cooked temperature. Okay, we're about 15 minutes in. I noticed my smoke was dying off a little. I guess there's not a lot of uh, smoke in those little twigs. So I added some more of those apple twigs. And obviously the when you take the top off, you're still going to lose a little bit of temperature. So we're just about back to where I want it. Right at about 225 is good. And again, I didn't have to take the lid off because I have this arrangement with that small grill underneath. I just lifted the smoker right off and didn't disturb the meat or the container essentially and topped up the um, wood chunks for smoking and we're off to the races again. Usually you have to do this maybe one time during the 45 minutes if you were smoking longer than an hour, hour and a half, maybe twice. And here's what it looks like if you're taking the smoker off to adjust the coals in that small grill down below. So the smoker's undisturbed. I can adjust my coals or add wood or open and close that vent down there if I need to uh, while the meat continues to cook. And then right back on when I'm ready. Okay, I think we're just about done. Temperature's where I want it. I put it into a thicker part of the chicken breast. This one is bigger. That might take a couple more minutes. And the thighs can kind of take a beating. 
I'm sure they're a little higher in temperature, but they'll be fine. It's the chicken breast I'm worried about. Do you want that tender? So we're going to pull this off now, except for that last piece. I'll leave that a few more minutes and see what we got. All right, so we got our chicken smoked. Um, this is what it looks like when it's done. Usually, at this point, there's enough life in the coals to cook some sausages or something like that. Now, not raw sausages, but uh, the kind of sausage that um, you just need to really reheat. And those brown up and plump up nicely on the grill. Or sometimes I'll put bacon on there. Um, you can put half a slab of bacon on there for 20 minutes or half an hour. And it cooks up beautifully. So, here's some tips. Um, and hacks. So the first thing is if you have a water smoker if the thermometer is in the lid you need to get rid of that because it's going to be way hotter than the cooking temperature at food level. So you can buy a thermometer for five to ten bucks big box stores Amazon and just drill a hole right at food level where your main grilling surface is and install that thing there. Preferably one that shows degrees so you can monitor your temperature. Right around 225 seems to be a sweet spot. Uh, if you cook it much hotter than that, it won't get uh, smoked before it's cooked. If you cook it slower than that, I mean, it's kind of unnecessary unless you had a, a different cut of meat. If you're doing brisket and there's all kinds of other stuff uh, this video doesn't go into, but uh, right about 225 is what you're looking for. For the chicken. Uh, in my case, um, the water smoker and several I've bought come with two of those black trays. The upper one designed for water, the lower one designed for coals. Um, I found that too hard to regulate temperature. There's really no airflow through the coals in the um, tray that comes with the water smoker. And then every time you try to add coals, you're opening the front door, you're trying to squeeze some wood briquettes or coals or whatever in through the gap between the bottom of the water bowl and it just was a real pain. So uh, I took the legs off and flipped them around to the outside and now that thing fits beautifully over a small grill. Uh, I bought it, I think it was Home Depot. In my case it's a Little Joe is the brand. The brand doesn't matter. And uh, that can also be used independently as a grill by itself if I just want to grill some food for dinner and not mess with the smoker. And it has air vents on the bottom, so you can kind of adjust the airflow, and then you can lift the entire smoker off without disturbing the temperature in there while you put some more coals in there or put some more wood chunks or whatever you want to do. That's key. That's been a huge help. Um, regarding the chicken, for tenderness, you want to brine your chicken overnight. Salt water. Um, I think my recipe is about a third of a cup of salt to a gallon of water, approximately. Uh, if in doubt, throw some more in there, stir it around. If it doesn't dissolve, it'll just fall into the bottom of the pan. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, when you're done with your chicken, you want to dump out the salty water and rinse it off. You don't need any extra salt on the surface. You'll have noticed that the chicken has plumped up and um, it's going to smoke much more tenderly than if you had not done the brining step. Uh, so you rinse it off and then you want to dry your chicken and have it come up to room temperature before you put it on the grill because that's that's less energy required from your coals. Your temperature is going to be a little more consistent. If you put the chicken in at 50 degrees or whatever it is in the fridge 39 degrees or something and you took it right out there and put it on a lot of energy is going to go into bringing that up to temperature. So if you get your coals set up so you're 225, by the time the chicken has come up to temperature, now you'll find your temperature kind of sore a bit um, because you'll have too much coals on there to get 225 at fridge temperature. So rinse the chicken off after you dump out the brine water and dry it. And leave it sit around for a half hour, hour before you're ready. I take it out of the fridge while I'm before I start the coals, and that time frame seems to work out. Uh, water, use hot water. Again, same principle. If you put cold water into the water tray, the energy from the coals is going. Some of it's going to be used up heating that to boiling um, before you get your steam. So if you use hot water, you're ready to go. And again, it's easier to regulate your temperature when you've done these few steps. Um, 
Chicken doesn't take that long. In this case, this brine chicken took about 45 minutes. So you want to add smoke early. Um, a bunch of smoke in the beginning because if you don't put any wood chips in um, for the first 15 or 20 minutes, by the time you do put some in, you won't have any color on your chicken. You won't have a smoke ring. So you want to have smoke early and a bunch of it. Um, usually takes maybe four chunks of wood. Today I experimented with some apple tree cuttings and those work fine, but they tend to produce a lot of smoke for a brief period of time. Uh, that was a bit of an experiment, but whatever. Um, temperature, pull them off at 145 or thereabouts. If you cook the chicken breast to 160, it's gonna be dry, it's gonna be overcooked. Now, the USDA recommends cooking meat to 160 degrees so it's safe, but if you actually look deeper into that, they want it to 160 degrees for just a few seconds. It can also be considered cooked at a lower temperature for a longer period. So if this was uh, 145 degrees and it took 45 minutes to get there and the temperature climbed steadily the whole time, you're going to achieve the same level of bug killing as if we had thrown it on the grill for 10 minutes and gotten straight to 160. So you need to read up on that. I've got some terrific insights on the website, Amazing Ribs, uh, Meathead, appropriately, is the uh, moderator, the owner of that site, but he goes into the science of cooking temperatures. And again, when you pull it off at 145, the temperature, the internal temperature continues to rise a little bit. So if you were to leave it till it hit 160, pull it off, it'll be 165 or 170. By the time you bring it in the house and you're ready to cut it, and then it's just overcooked and dry. So temperature is a big one. So those are the tips and those are the hacks. A um, little bit of work in the beginning, figuring out the grill and all that. This system has worked really well for me. Um, I've cooked, you know, pork and chicken and bacon and sausages and all kinds of stuff on there. Beef, you know, you name it. And that little old grill was given to me actually. But there's no reason you couldn't use a, for example, $30 water smoker five to ten bucks for a thermometer and maybe fifteen or twenty bucks for one of those small grills um, to achieve the same result and uh, the food is delicious so happy smoking here's what we get at the end moist and juicy chicken breast chicken thighs some color a little bit of a smoke ring around there delicious for dinner tonight with uh, potato salad and beans, I think.